So Nick Broughton, setting up vision. Mm -hmm. First thing you do is set up your frames? Yep. Which frames up, exactly? I'm going to set up my tool frames first. I'm using frame number nine as my calibration. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to go into it. I want to use, not direct entry, but the three-point method. Approach point one. That looks pretty good. Approach point two. Close it. Record. All right, we're going to double check that, make sure everything looks really nice. Frame number nine is my calibration. I'm going to clear it. The three point method. That's approach point one, approach point two, approach point two, All right. and number three. We now have our tool frame for calibration purposes. Pointer tool frame. Back to point number one. All right, we're going to double check that, make sure everything looks really nice, and it looks pretty good. I'm going to write these down so I can direct entry to the next step. Measuring this to get the Z offset gives us 27.457. We measured the difference between the gripper and the pointer, and now we can use those values, subtract the pointer and direct entry, use the direct entry method to give us our gripper tool frame. Tool pointer frame was nine. The gripper tool frame is frame eight. Okay. So I will go into frame eight, which we will use for the gripper. So you just wrote down all the uh, X, Y, Z, W, P, and R, four, nine. You're entering them into eight, which you're gonna change the Z to subtract the distance from the pointer to the face of the jaw. That's correct. And there we go. Those are our numbers. Well, let's teach some user frames. First, our calibration grid frame. So we're using the four point method. First, start at the orient origin point to set the X and Y axes. So now your orient origin point for your user frame for grid calibration. Correct. Now the X direction point, we will move, we are in world mode, and we will move in the X direction. X direction is... Hit it. Recorded. All right, now All right. the Y direction, move back to the origin, and then go in the Y direction. That looks good, and our Y direction is recorded. Boom. Now we will record the system origin point, which is the center of the grid. That look good to you? Yep. And we're recorded. All of our data gets filled in. Cool. Now it's time to record our application user frame. For that, I'm basically going to use the same thing. So frame's done. Frame's done. We're going to jog the robot out of the way. So it doesn't block our camera's view. Let's set up our camera. Grid pattern calibration tool is what we want. We need that. We need your I'm going to go to our camera calibration tool. I'm going to application frame. We're going to be using application frame eight. Our camera, our Viz one two three, is what we selected. Okay, nice exposure. So that. We're using perspective, not orthogonal. We're putting in the focal length of mm -hmm. our 25 millimeter lens. We had a few errors on it. We've cleared them out. Yep. Let's walk through it. Yep. Okay. We are starting our grid pattern calibration tool. Uh, application frame will be user frame eight. Our camera is a Viz 213. Uh, our exposure looks pretty good. Grid spacing is 15. Calibration grid frame is user frame 9. We're using perspective pro projection. We are overriding our focal distance to be 25 millimeters to match our lens. Uh, set the fixture position status. We're going to find our plane, set of that. This is OK. We're going to look at our points. Uh, we have one bad point that's a pixel off, number 5. We'll delete that. 
and 0.7 is the worst we have, so that's pretty good. Just for um, informational purposes, go back to um, data and the override focal length. When you uncheck it, I think it's supposed to okay. say no. Yeah. Then you have to recalculate. Yep. And I'm just wondering why it comes up with 65-ish. So yeah, it's when you don't override it, it thinks it's a 68 millimeter focal length lens. Which you, and then when you go to the data and look at the Z, it, is it thinks it's way further, way further, almost three times the distance than what the camera. The camera really is about 800 millimeters from the focal plane to the to the uh, grid, the calibration grid. Okay, so mm -hmm. go back again just to show that when we put this on override, yes, put it on our 25 millimeter. Just do this again, just to be safe. Find. Delete our bad point. And back to a good calibration. And it says 25 million, and it showed data. And it actually shows we're 838 millimeters, so it's about off about 20 millimeters from what it actually should, so pretty, pretty accurate. All right, creating the vision process tool. Create a new Did one. the vision process and tool. 2D single view vision process is what we want to use. Uh, so this is our new setup. We put, place this white background over the calibration grid and then we're going to double stick tape a battery in roughly the center there with it parallel to the X. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we're editing our 2D single view vision process. We're going to select our camera, Viz 213A. Back to this, we set up our battery and then we yep. turned our light on. A little washed out, so we're going to set exposure down. That looks really good right there, actually. Our offset frame is going to be user frame 8. That's our application frame? It is our application frame. Uh, and now it's time to set our GPM location to the computer tool. We're going to try to teach this. Set that in on the battery. And yeah, we actually get some pretty good detail on that. We are going to uh, set the origin of this, change that just a little bit. And now we'll set a training mask to get rid of the Rayovac symbol, the logo on the battery. So just uh, save this and go back to our single view vision process. Now that we've got our GPM, we can try to find it, which we have done successfully. It has found it, that's number one. Can you click up the results? Uh, at the bottom tab, right? Oh, results, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, found it in 95 milliseconds. It is located here. Set score our, of 100. Score of 100. Perfect score. We're going to set our reference status. And that looks good. Key thing is here, we're going to leave it the same exact position mm -hmm. when we use, when we create our new teach pendant program and teach this pick position. I did save it. Okay. Close out of that, go into our vision runtime and see what happens when we try to run it. All right, now it's time to create the teach pendant program. Mm -hmm. First thing we have to do is tell our vision system where the battery is. So we do that by creating a point on the battery. We have not moved it since calibrating it. And we are going to move over the battery. We create a home position that's going to be out of the way of the lighting mm -hmm. for it to take a pick. Okay. We have created that home position previously. So we are going to line this thing up that we're saving this to. And we are going to record that as a vision pick. Now we can move our Z axis up a bit and record that as our vision approach point. And, and both of these positions, both of these taught positions are going to use your vision register offset. Vision register offset number three, which has been initialized and is ready to go. Alright, we have written our vision pick program. 
We're setting our user frame number as 8, that's our application frame. Our user tool number is set as 8, that is our gripper. Uh, we are setting it as, we're starting at a pick home position, which puts the robot out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of the vision process. Uh, open the gripper, turn the light on. It now runs the vision find, and that's our process, viz213b, that we just created. So it finds the battery using that. It gets the offset from that process. It asks where is the battery in the picture, and then offsets our uh, vision register appropriately to vision register 8. Stores that data in vision register 8. Doesn't find an image, what does it do? It jumps to label 999. Correct. Uh, after that, waits a second just to make sure everything's cool. Turns the light off. It now moves to the approach point to where it says the battery is with the offset in place of vision register 8. You can see that there. It picks according to the offset and op uh, closes the gripper. Gripper open is off, so it closes the gripper and grabs the battery and then retreats to the approach, approach point also according to the register of 8. Uh, it then goes to the place point, places it, opens the gripper, and approaches the place again, and goes back home. Okay. Right. So now we're going to run a test of your first uh, pick with really no offset because you're picking this mm -hmm. in the exact place where you taught it Correct. and where you created the model ID for the vision offset. Mm -hmm. So. Running this should be no offset data and should be able to pick no problem. Yep. And here we go. It has found a battery. And that's not where it's supposed to go. And that's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Looking at our runtime data here, these are our numbers when we ran the vision offset, even though it was in the exact same position where we taught it and where we created the vision model ID, we got this offset information here and when it went to pick it started to head that far off from the battery. So not sure what's happening here where students are getting offsets this inaccurate after setting up a very accurate calibration